is because we're going to be talking about something very important today to me and my body. It's probably very important to you and your body as well. We are continuing our conversation about hormones. Hormones, hormones, wonderful hormones. So let's get into it. I'm also going to share screen because I do have a couple little images that I think would be helpful in understanding what it is that we are talking about here. So let's go ahead and share that screen. First of all, estrogen. It's the female sex hormone. That's what it's known as. And it's made either in the ovaries, your adrenal glands, or your fat tissues. Now, of course, this is important because we're going to come back to where these hormones are made and the way in which they interrelate to other hormones. So first and foremost, let's always remember that hormones are chemical messengers. All of our hormones are needed, but of course, too little is too little and there are symptoms. And too much is, of course, too much and there are also symptoms. Even of a good thing, too much is too much. We are always, always, always wanting and striving for balance. So a couple of things to know just about our menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle, of course, starts with the first day of your period. It ends at the next period begins. So that's, that's the cycle from the first day until the, the month later, typically. Hormones, sig hormone signals are sent back and forth between the brain, the other endocrine organs, and the ovaries. The first part of the cycle prepares an egg to be released from the ovary and builds the lining of the uterus. The second part of the cycle prepares the uterus and body to accept a fertilized egg or to start the next cycle of pregnancy um, if the pregnancy doesn't happen. So understanding the menstrual cycle is important because it can impact the body from head to toe. Now, some people notice changes in their hair, skin, poop, chronic disease symptoms, mental health, migraine headaches, even the way we experience sex at different points of our menstrual cycle. So menstruation or the period is the shedding of the lining of the uterus and levels of estrogen and progesterone are both low. The time between the first day of the period and ovulation, estrogen rises as an egg prepares to be released. After the period, the uterine lining builds back up again. During ovulation, the release of the egg from the ovary in mid-cycle. Estrogen peaks just beforehand and then drops shortly after. In the luteal phase, the time between ovulation and before the start of menstruation, when the body prepares for a possible pregnancy, progesterone then is produced and it peaks and then it drops. In the secondary phase, the uterine line produces chemicals that will either help support the pregnancy or prepare for the lining to be shed, and then that's when we have another period. So this is actually kind of interesting because this is obviously just the very basic, simple, yeah, yeah, we kind of already know that, right? Like your period starts and, and over the course of the days and the couple of weeks, the estrogen starts to build and build and build, and then it drops and you ovulate and then progesterone starts to build and then it drops and then you have your period. Okay, so this is like pretty basic, but this is the way in which estrogen, progesterone, and the other hormones interact with each other. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about dopamine. So this is from um, Dr. Lustig's book. He says that at least half of all women will tell you that their menstrual cycles make them hormonal, playing havoc with their level of performance on simple tasks and their working memory. Rising estrogen means rising dopamine. At the time of ovulation, when estrogen level is at its peak, women can be either focused and motivated, checking things off their to-do list, or on the verge of maiming their family members for forgetting to pick up the ice cream. Now, who's who and why and which are you? Now, depending on where you start in the dopamine bell-shaped curve. Remember when we were talking about dopamine, we talked about 
the satisfaction and the reward that we get from food and the way in which that stimulates behavior. So on this bell-shaped curve here, which, which is likely predetermined by genetics, of course, right? Around 25% of women start on the left side of the curve because they have the Val-Val genotype. The combination of genes on each set of chromosomes in each cell, name of the proteins, and I don't know, we don't really have to get all into the gist of that. But the basic idea here is that when your estrogen rises before ovulation, it actually shifts them to their optimal level on the curve and they become clearer and sharper. Now there are some women who that is their experience right? About a quarter of us, one out of four. Another 25% of women spend the majority of the month at their optimal dopamine levels on the curve. That boosting estrogen and ovulation then pushes them further to the right of the curve, which then can cause befuddlement, irritability, and aggression. So if you snap at the smallest thing on, a, on that monthly basis when you're ovulating and assuming that you're not on birth control, it may be due to having the met, met genotype instead. So let's just go over this for one more minute here. Again, remembering always that all your different hormones interplay with each other. When one is up, the others move in to compensate. When one is down, the others move in to compensate. They all play with each other. And our mood, our attitude, our energy, our cravings, everything is controlled by our hormones. And when we're doing things that throw our hormones out of whack, like eating things that don't serve our body, drinking things that don't serve our body, thinking things that don't serve our life, and doing things that don't serve our life or our body, right? Remember that eating, drinking, thinking, and doing? These are all ways in which we affect our hormonal balance. And when it gets out of whack, it gets out of whack. So going back to this dopamine bell curve, this is really where we want to be in the middle. And I would like you to notice right here that if you're overweight or obese, you're already starting with the deck not quite full. And so the adjustments in um, the cycles of the month and of course the cycle of life for us women can have some pretty serious effects, make us very stressed out and very irritable and very overwhelmed. Okay, so let's just talk for a moment about progesterone and when it's too low. You can get symptoms like irregular menstrual cycles, infertility, headaches and migraines, mood changes, including anxiety or depression, hot flashes, weight gain, fibroids, and endometriosis. And then of course, when it's too high, tenderness in the breasts, slight dizziness, water retention, drowsiness, and feelings of a spinning sensation. So it's always so interesting to me how many things, I mean, I know I keep saying this, right? Like almost every experience that we have is driven by these chemical messengers inside of our body. Our hormones and the way and the signals that they are sending and the signals that they are receiving and then the actions that then they are taking based on what signals that they got and how many things that we are doing in our life that are making the signals be kind of like they're crossing the signals instead of having a nice good flow okay so what about estrogen so when it's too low you get a painful sex due to lack of vaginal lubrication an increase in urinary tract infections due to a thinning of the urethra irregular absent periods mood swings hot flashes breast tenderness headaches um, or accentuation of pre-existing migraines depression, trouble concentrating, and fatigue. And then of course, when it's too high, bloating, swelling, tenderness of your breasts, fibric lumps in your breasts, decreased sex drive, irregular menstrual periods, mood swings, headaches, anxiety and panic attacks, weight gain, hair loss, cold hands or feet, trouble sleeping, sleepness or fatigue, memory problems. I mean, honestly, if we took a, a, um, a survey to see how many of us have these different symptoms. I mean, of all the hormones that we've been talking about all month, so each of the power lessons, the last four or five that we've done, there are symptoms of too much and too little. And again, when they gets thrown off, then our experience is really not so great in life. 
So let's get down to the basics here. There are some really common concerns when we're talking about estrogen. I imagine that you know, when I, when I sent out which hormones do you guys want to talk about, the majority of you said the estrogen progesterone. And I imagine that it's one of two things. You're either concerned about menopause and the weight gain and the irritability and all the symptoms around our hormones being out of balance and the, the change of life happening, and or you're concerned about breast cancer. These are the two things that are foremost in our minds as women, typically, at least in mine and the people that I've talked to, um, is uh, for women is breast cancer. So of course, uh, hot flashes appear to be caused by dropping estrogen levels when the brain has been exposed to and gotten used to higher estrogen levels, right? So if you have year after year after year of normal estrogen levels and then it drops, then you can have symptoms including hot flashes and perimenopause um, occur because of the big swings. But even see this last little part here, even from high to normal. So if we're moving into menopause, obese, our dopamine out of whack because we've been eating and drinking and stressing, putting all of our energy and our time and our attention on other people and not practicing self-care with proper eating, proper drinking, proper uh, stress reduction, exercise, those sorts of wonderful things, what happens is that the experience that we have moving into perimenopause and menopause is intensely dramatized. And it doesn't need to be that dramatic. And then we move into it and it's like a whole big ordeal. So if you are starting, if you're already overweight or obese, you're starting on the other side. Let's go back up to that again. See, right? You're already have so much estrogen, already stressed out, already irritable, and then you have a drop in estrogen. You might actually move right to this middle part in terms of your estrogen, but your body, so you might be like, okay, yeah, I'm fun, I'm focused, but all night I'm sweating and I can't stand it. <laughs> These like awful hot flashes sometimes in the night, sometimes just randomly throughout the day, and it's just super frustrating. I'm super frustrating. So what we wanna do is we want to balance our hormones so that transition has been, is, is lighter, it's more fluid. Our body knows what to do. We're not adding extra stress to it. And then of course there are concerns about breast cancer. There's a lot of um, research going on right now. Of course there's always, it doesn't matter what it is, there's always gonna be someone who believes it and totally supports it and has studies to prove it and other people who don't and have studies to prove it. So we're just going to back up and understand that the role of estrogen in our female reproductive organs is vital. It is important and it does make a difference. And Dr. Mark Hyman says that to become proactive and prevent or reverse breast cancer, you absolutely want to eliminate sugar. Now, we're going to get to why that is in just a moment. So estrogen dominance is a bodily imbalance that occurs when estrogen levels are too high and progesterone is too low. It promotes the growth of fibroids, cysts, cervical dysplasia, and tumors. And it's estimated that half of American women over 35 are estrogen dominant. Again, we all, we are also overweight and obese. Because remember, your, the estrogen gets made in fat cells as well as your ovaries, as well as your adrenals. So Dr. Axe, which I, he's, he's wonderful. I highly recommend you go follow him and see what he's got to say because he just is wonderful at explaining things. He says, the good news is that there are powerful ways to dramatically reduce the amount of estrogen-like compounds that you eat or absorb. So we're going to get back to that in a moment, but the things that we are talking about here today are estrogen. It affects your mood, energy, concentration, sex drive, everything we can think of. Progesterone, again, needed for the balance, triggers the estrogen to go up or to go down. We need it for balance, for mood, for energy, for clarity. And our insulin, 
listen, there's something really interesting about insulin. And Dr. Mark Hyman um, talks, of, he says, one of the most powerful ways to reduce your risk of breast cancer or encourage the healing process is to eliminate sugar. We talked about that. He goes on to say that every time you eat sugar, you increase insulin. High insulin levels also increase estrogen levels. Remember, because the insulin is then storing fat. Estrogen is being produced in the fat cells. High estrogen levels correlate with increased breast cancer risk. Increased insulin also means your body becomes really good at storing fat and the vicious cycle ensues as your insulin and estrogen levels stay cranked up. Studies show that excess body fat um, increases your risk of breast cancer. So now you're overweight, you've got inflammation, you've got high estrogen, and you can see how this becomes a recipe for disaster. One more time, to become proactive and prevent or reverse cancer, breast cancer, you absolutely want to eliminate sugar. And I know it's tough, ladies, but when it comes to the dopamine, we just, the sugar makes it go all over the place, but then we're never satisfied. When it comes to the estrogen, you got to get rid of the sugar. When it comes to insulin, you got to get rid of the sugar. I mean, it just continues to be kind of like a broken record. And I get it. There's something so sweet, literally, about sugar. It's so satisfying sort of. But really, if we go back to this other bell-shaped curve that we're talking about, here's the reward and here's the dopamine cycle. Listen, there is a perfect sweet spot, but once you go over it, you are no longer feeling the joy and the satisfaction from the food that you're eating. If you're already obese, they, the multiple, multiple studies, the reason why you can eat cookie after cookie after cookie, or, you know, bowl of ice cream after bowl of ice cream after bowl of ice cream, or pizza after pizza after pizza, sorry, I usually don't like to say the actual words because it's just like, why? But the reason why there's no satisfaction is because we're already way over here. Our estrogen is high, our fat's being stored. We never actually get the satisfaction we never, we're looking for the reward and we never get it because we're already way over here on the cycle and then it causes more stress and now we're irritable and we can't stop until we're actually physically full, which is not a good barometer of you've had um, the right amount to eat for your body. This is a sign that the hormones are out of whack. If you put a measuring tape right around your belly button as a woman and you've got 35 inches or more, you have a hormonal imbalance. There is a problem going on inside the body and you cannot fight your physiology. That's, that is one of the things that we talk about, meaning that if your hormones are out of balance, you will consistently be getting the wrong message, the message of eat more, never satisfied, I'm still hungry, and then we have all these other symptoms that go on, and we want to blame it on the period, or blame it on the menopause, or blame it on this or that, and really, it's just our hormones are out of balance. Okay, so we talked about insulin and the blood sugars, clarity, mood, craver, hung, hunger, energy, etc. and we talked about dopamine, the fun, the focus, the enjoyment, that's what we want. We want to enjoy life, all of it. Our mood is affected. Our movement is affected. Everything is affected by that. Okay, here's like one kind of like little side note, and I know that I, <laughs> we're going on here, but fun fact, estrogen acts on the liver to cause an overall reduction in the total amount of cholesterol in the body, increases the amount of good cholesterol, decreasing the bad cholesterol. So it's just one little like side note of the reason why we want to have balance, balance, balance. Okay, so this is what's really, really important here, okay? Healthy estrogen metabolism is present in vegetables like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, mustard greens, Brussels sprouts. Calcium and uh, helps reduce total estrogen levels and is found in veggies, citrus fruits, and things like cucumbers, pumpkins, cantaloupe, and squash. Exercise is good for the body. Fresh, alive, and vibrant foods. One of the 
biggest things that we want to understand also is that changing our hormones, even in good ways, will shift the balance of your other hormones. The most important thing that you can do to help manage the problems of aging is to keep your metabolism healthy. When your metabolism is working well, so that's the way in which your body takes in food and drink and then makes you, right? All the cells and the systems and the experiences and your perception and your energy and your vitality and your cravings and your sleep cycle and your ability to experience joy, all of that is dependent upon your metabolism working properly. When your metabolism, it, metabolism is working well, your body adjusts to the changes in hormones over time. Let me repeat that. Your body adjusts naturally. Those who breeze through menopause with the least symptoms are those who have the healthiest metabolism. So what can we do? Rose, what is happening here? Oh, am I going to eat a bunch of things that can lower my, my estrogen if my estrogen is too high? Or maybe I should eat a bunch of things that, that um, you know, increase it if my estrogen is too, too low. And we're really, we get really focused on this one thing and, and balancing that. And if that thing was just balanced, then it would all be good. And we forget to step back and look at the whole picture. Every single one of your hormones work in relationship to the others. Blood sugar increases insulin. Insulin messes with leptin. Leptin then tells your body that you're full and satisfied. Dopamine is part of that cycle as well. It's where we find our reward. Dopamine is then also going to affect estrogen. Estrogen affects dopamine. So our pleasure, our energy, our life, our mood, our body, our metabolism, everything relies upon your body getting the proper ingredients. Remember those Legos that we were talking about last week? Your body needs the right ingredients and then it knows what to do. You don't need to really worry about it. And I've seen this time and time and time again. Now, are there some rare cases where people actually need some kind of um, you know, chemical medical intervention? Yeah, but let me tell you, that's maybe 10 to 20% maybe 10 okay it's probably not us right the first thing is always first consume adequate amounts of fiber remember ladies all real food right we eat real food and all food that grows has fiber Fiber helps remove excess estrogen from the body and helps stabilize blood sugar levels, which is critical for optimal hormonal balance and a functioning metabolism. Let's get personal here. <laughs> I'm bringing back to the face because I want to be very clear on what we're talking about here. First things first, if you have not have a plan and a support system to deal with stress, to deal with the people pleasing that is extremely typical of those of us who have struggled with our weight for our entire life. It's too painful to go inside and look at stuff sometimes, and we just end up doing and doing and doing and doing for others until we end up stuck in a spot where our health is fading, we don't feel good, we don't have energy, we don't have motivation, and we're kind of annoyed at all the people that we've taken care of for all of these years. And you know what? They're annoyed with us as well. So if you don't have a plan for how to deal with stress, and if you're still eating processed foods that are high in sugar and flour and, and the unhealthy, funky fats that disturb the proper metabolism of your body, you are doing yourself a disservice. And running to the doctor saying, oh, I've got high estrogen, I've got low estrogen, I need dopamine help, I need, put me on a pill to lower my insulin or I need more insulin, that is just a band-aid and you will continue to have negative consequences and side effects again and again and again, because they all play with each other. You cannot actually have the healing that you're looking for and that you deserve. Gosh darn it, I'm gonna say that again. You deserve it. 
You deserve to be happy and healthy and joyous and free and not be suffering from an imbalanced hormones because you don't really know what to do next. So listen, do this, deal with the stress, deal with the food. You got this. And you know what? That's literally why I have created the program that I have. So you are in a really good spot in a really good place. You can no longer say that you didn't know and that there was nowhere to go for help. Yes, there is. You are more than welcome to send me a PM to jump into my schedule and learn more about my actual program that addresses these exact issues. How to balance the hormones so that we can think, act, and respond to life naturally thin meaning that we are ba our hormones are in balance, that we're not continually looking for something and never really being satisfied. It's a hormonal thing. It's not um, a moral issue or anything that's necessarily wrong with like our mentality. It's simply our physical body responding to what we've been doing to it year after year after year with the stress, the emotional stress and the stress of the processed food culture that we have. Okay, so that's my spiel about that. You could tell that I was having like a little too much fun hanging out, <laughs> doing some research and putting this all together for you. It is a lot of information, ladies. We just went over a lot. So I hope that that all made sense. Let me just like jump back into the group real quick and see if there are any questions. Nope, it looks good. All right, ladies, you're amazing and wonderful. You deserve the best life. It is totally possible regardless of you where you are in age, where you are in your, you know, way before menopause, pre-menopause, after menopause, whether you have a uterus or not, whether any any of that, whether you've had breast cancer or not, it all comes back to the same basic gist. Your beautiful human body needs certain things to function optimally. So let's go ahead and give it those things. It's not quote normal, right? Normal is to be on a bunch of medications and be eating fast food several times a week. So it's not going to be normal. You're going to have to step outside of your comfort zone and do something different. And my hope for you is that you find that place and that space and those people that you trust enough to put aside doubt and take that next step forward. It's possible for you. All right. Love you, ladies. Talk to you soon. Bye.